Hi, it's Beth from Around the Table Yarns. Tonight is the uh, second to last class for the Wren sweater from the Wolf Folk Design Team. We are doing it in all different sizes, but tonight we've come to the end of the knitting and the beginning of the putting together or the end of some of the knitting because there's a little bit of knitting left tonight. Um, my sweater is partially put together. So I just want to hold it up and show you where, where we're at with this. Um, I did an intentionally oversized sweater. And so it's gotten quite large. It's been blocked now. So I'm really looking forward to this big warm sweater made from why not fibers. Um, oh no, I can't remember which one it is. I, it might be Shetlandia. It might be her Shetland wool. Um, but I'm really looking forward to this big warm sweater, especially because my boiler's not working right now. Um, the morning class, we did a three needle bind off and you can see it here. I was using um, not the right yarn. So there's a little visible seam there and this could be pressed to make it flatter, but this is what the three needle bind off will look like. So it's a really smooth kind of a finish for the top of a shoulder. And um, we'll see that a little bit clearer when we get it under the camera. Um, most of the people doing this are doing the turned down collar. And so we finished one side of the collar this afternoon or this morning. It was closer to afternoon when we got to the collar part. So um, I'm gonna show you how to do this part today too and tack down the inside of the collar. So those are the two demonstrations we're gonna go through today. And then um, we're going to be ready to do joining the shoulders of the sleeves, joining the sleeves, sorry, to the shoulders of the sweater, to the, the sides of the sweater um, next time and doing the side seams next time. And that's the last of the, the Ren sweater, and then we'll be moving on in January to the quintessential cardigan from Church Mouse Yarns, and we'll be making mm -hmm. that in in the long, slow, six month um, way that we did this sweater. Okay. So I'm excited to get this one off my needles or finished. So I'm going to switch over to the camera. get it. So here's a closer look at my shoulder seam that I did. This is what we're going to be doing. Um, you can see that I used a very similar color. There's like a little bit browner color in there. That is the yarn that I used to do my seaming. Um, it was a little thinner. So I'm probably going to pull this out and redo it with the correct yarn because, because I'm a perfectionist. Um, but that seam looks very smooth and finished. This is what the inside of it looks like. So you can see it was very close in color, but it's not quite the same weight and it doesn't look exactly the same. And I think I'll like it better if it's done with the, um, the correct yarn. So I'm going to, I'm going to be undoing that. Um, but I also did this part of the collar. So the collar is, it comes up with decreases and then increases that are meant to be folded down and, and tacked down on the inside. So the two sides of the collar eventually will be seamed together and then folded under and tacked down. So that's what's happened already on this side and that's what's going to happen tonight on the other side. And I'll be demonstrating that. But the first thing we're gonna do is a three needle bind off. So there's different ways that people might have been holding their stitches at the top of the shoulders. I have both on a piece of waist yarn and on a barber cord. So I'm gonna demonstrate getting these back onto needles. Ideally, when you are moving things onto needles that have been on hold, it would be a really good idea not to use a very thick needle. Um, it, it's harder to slide a needle in when you've blocked something, when it's been sitting on hold, these stitches have relaxed for a while and they're smaller than they were when there was a needle sitting in them. So my recommendation is to find 
straight needles or circular needles that are smaller than what you knitted on and use those for transferring your stitches onto. I'm gonna actually use straight needles because I just happen to have them handy. And I'm going to slide, because I have a single point, I want to work from the shoulder, sorry, the inside of the shoulder at the neck out to the outside of the shoulder um, so that I can work my three needle bind off from the outside of the shoulder in. No. Yes. Yes, because I want this to be nice and even at the end. I'm saying that backwards. I want to work it from the inside out because if there's an issue, I don't want it to be here. I want these stitches to look nice and smooth. And if there's any issue, I want it to be away from my face. So I'm going to be putting my needles in from the shoulder out. And I'm realizing I did it backwards this morning, but it turned out that I had exactly the right number of stitches. So it was a moot. If you don't have the right number of stitches, this becomes more important. In other words, on the front of my sweater, I have 42 stitches and on the back of my sweater, I have, or 44 stitches, I can't remember, one of those two. So as long as you have the same number of stitches, it's not super important. But if there's any fudging to do, it's better not to do the fudging right where you can, uh, where right where somebody is gonna be looking at your sweater. So now I'm just sliding my smaller size needle into the stitches. I haven't removed the waist yarn yet. I just started sliding these stitches on. I'm going from the shoulder into the neck, which is different than I told people to do this morning. So if you're watching and you were there this morning, forgive me. When you have all of the stitches on, you can untie or break the yarn that's been used to hold it and pull it out, and those stitches are secure. My second needle, I can put in more easily because these are on a barber cord. A barber cord is a silicon cord that's very smooth and a little bit stretchy. I take the point of the needle and I insert it into the barber cord and I kind of push down as firmly as I can. Let me move the other side of the sweater so we don't aren't looking at both of them. So it looks like it's attached and I gently want to pull that needle up to the stitches and then I don't want to pull from here from the end of the cord because I could just pop it right off of the tip of the needle and then I'd be sitting in here, the barber cord would travel through and I'd have loose stitches that don't have a needle in it. So what I wanna do is actually push the needle in and take up the slack and push the needle in. Push the needle in. So I'm pushing it along, but see where it gets a little bit spread out, you want to keep taking up the slack on the left without pulling on that barber cord. I did manage to pull somebody's barber cord right off when I was helping them. So I want to make sure that I don't pull really hard on the this right here, because if I do, it could come right off of the, the needle. But there we go. That was much faster. So that's the reason to use a barber cord is it's just a really speedy way to move stitches from being on hold. All right, now I have two needles with the same set of, num the same number of stitches on them. They're pointing in the same direction. I have two different needles because I just grabbed ones that were smaller. These are just holding the stitches. Um, somebody else used a circular needle and she had it going, you know, with the points going again towards the neck. So my neck is here. And um, with the cord attached back at the end. So you could do it that way as well. 
When I do the three needle bind off, I'm actually going to put my wrong sides out and my right sides together. So that when I make the seam, I'm making the seam to be visible on the inside and as invisible as possible on the outside. So that's what it looks like on the outside, on the right side of the fabric and on the inside of the fabric, there's a little bit of a visible seam. All right. Let's down a little bit. And with the correct yarn, the remainder of my yarn for this project, I am going to, when I do a three needle bind off, I'm using the two needles. So in this case, my blue and my silver needle, almost as though they were one. And I tend to scrunch my yarn up towards the tips. I want my stitches to be kind of in step and next to each other. I don't wanna have one down here and one up here. I want them to be close to each other and I want the tips of the needles to be even. I'm gonna use a larger needle so that I make bigger stitches. So even though I use smaller needles to get the, um, the stitches back on to a needle, I'm not going to knit onto a smaller needle. I'm gonna knit onto a larger needle. And that's so I can make stitches of the correct size. Leaving a tail that will help me in doing some darning and sewing up. So I'm gonna leave about a 10 inch tail on this end. I just make a loop. So I've gone into the stitch on the front needle first as though to knit, and then into the stitch on the back needle as though to knit. So I'm going through both of those stitches as though to knit them. I loop the working yarn onto the right-hand needle and pull the yarn through both stitches. I like to use my right-hand needle, the one in my right hand, to push the old stitches off of the tip tips of the two left needles. So I just pushed both of those stitches off at the same time. I want to keep my thumb and finger back here holding on to these stitches so that we don't lose them off the tip of the needle. If you're a left-handed carrier, you can use another finger and your thumb and still have your yarn accessible. Then I'm going to do a second one. So I'm going to go into the stitch, the next stitch on my front needle, the next stitch on my back needle. I'm going to leave the long tail and not work with it. I'm going to wrap and bring it through both of the needles, both of the stitches on the two needles. There's my two stitches on the needle. I'm going to push them off together, but I'm not going to lose the next two stitches. Now I have all the rest of my stitches on my left needle and two stitches that are completed on my right needle. With the back of the two needles, I pick up the first one I did and pull it over the second one, just like any other bind off. So now I just have one stitch on my right hand needle. Continue working the two needle knitting and then with one needle, the bind off. You don't want to pull the working yarn tightly because you want it to be loose enough to make a full size stitch in the seam. If you make a small stitch in the seam, it could pucker the seam or make the seam very um, inelastic. And we want a little bit of elasticity in our seam. We don't want it to be, we don't want it to be, um, so inelastic that you're always trying to pull it or stretch it out because eventually you'll just break the yarn. So we're gonna do that for all of the stitches along this seam. And of course, since I'm working with straight needles, they're very noisy. They hit everything with their ends. 
I was reading recently that when you make a stitch correctly, so I wrap my, my yarn around my right hand needle. When I make that stitch, the size of the stitch is determined by the circumference of this needle. If I make that stitch up at the tip where it's tapered, I will have a variable size to my stitches. So it's really important to get past the tapered part of your knitting needle to the place where it starts to be always the same circumference. So I think of this as like a shoulder where the tip starts. You wanna always work around the needle, lower down on the, the body of that or the barrel of the needle beyond that shoulder so that you make the stitches the same size. And the analogy that was used to make this explanation to me was that of baking with a cup measurement for like a cup of sugar. So if you're going to use a cup, if you are just, you know, barely filling it, which would be the same as if I just made my stitches right on the tip like that, then you won't have the right sized, you won't have enough yarn or sugar. And if you make it really, really super loose, you'll have too much and there won't be an evenness. Oh, hello. And I dropped a stitch. So I'm gonna put that stitch back and I'm gonna put that stitch back. So if you drop a stitch, don't panic. Just put them back on the needles where they're supposed to go. Don't move. Just move only your hands and the needles. So there we've got it back on track. So I want to pay attention and see that I'm getting through both of these stitches so I don't drop any more. I find it's really easy for this to start moving and for the stitches to get out of alignment with each other. Also for the tips of the needles to get out of alignment with each other. So I often will go back and just straighten it with my fingertip to make sure that they're staying in line, especially as I make that last pass over. You want to be careful not to split the yarn as you're doing this because that'll make its own kind of issue. It will weaken the seam. So notice, like I said, I'm finishing these stitches by making sure I pull my knitting needle all the way through. I'm not just ending there. I'm making sure it goes onto the barrel of my ne needle. And that way you can see that the needle is moving easily through the stitches. I'm not pulling too tight. I'm keeping some slack in the seam stitches so that there's a little bit of elasticity and movement there. I did one of the largest sizes, so it's going to take me a second. I had the good camera at home for Sock Club the other day. And then I took it back to the store. So I have the one that doesn't stay in focus the whole time when I move. So I'll maybe take that off for a second and just finish the knitting and look at you.
This is one of my favorite ways of finishing a shoulder seam. Um, it's such a nice way to join something. Um, I've also seen some blankets. Uh, MDK did a knitted blanket where you pick up stitches and then you do a three needle bind off to join that the, the two sections of the blanket together or the three, it's actually three sections of the blanket together. Um, it makes for such a nice edge. So it's a really nice technique to have in your back pocket. I was so excited to block this sweater because it's um, very naturally spun yarn and naturally dyed, and it's got such an organic look to it. I'm really excited to wear this sweater. And I realize it's the same color as the last sweater I did, essentially gold. So maybe I like that color. I'm going to switch back to the camera view and just show you the last couple of stitches because we got to the end of it and people were like, well, what do you do with the last ones? You do the same thing with the last ones that you did with the first ones. Just like you would with a normal bind off. So I'm right here at the very end. I've got three stitches left. Two stitches left. Sometimes it helps if you separate them a little bit to get into the stitches. It makes it just a smidge easier. So when you get to the last stitches on your left needles, one comes off, you're just going to go into them one at a time. And work them as one stitch. And then you have two stitches remaining on your right hand needle. Pull the first one over the second, elongate this loop to the point where you can use it to weave in. So I like about six inches and I'm just going to break it. And there's my seam done in the same yarn instead of a different yarn <laughs> as my sweater. So it made a nice even seam and it's, I've got ends on both sides. Any questions about that part? It's blurry. Did you see enough of it, Paula? Okay. It is blurry. It, it goes out of focus because of this camera. Yeah, it's good enough. Okay. All right, so let's keep try and stay in focus. I'm gonna use those tails that tail that I had to do my seaming up here. So now I'm going to turn it to face the right side. I'm gonna turn my sweater back right side out. And I'm gonna work right sides together to mattress stitch the sides of this neckline together. And you can see this is the top of my seam or that the neck edge of my seam here. 
here's the end of my working yarn and I left it long enough intentionally to be able to sew this seam. So I'm gonna thread my darning needle. I found the smidgiest, tiniest darning needle in the of all the possible darning needles, but I think it will work. And you can see that, that the bumps of the garter stitch nice and close. So in this pattern, all of the edges were worked with a garter stitch selvage. So you knit the first stitch on the purl side as well as on the knit side. And that creates these purl bumps that are in a nice row along the edge of all the sides of the sweater, both the side edge, uh, the shoulder edge, and here at the neck edge. So I'm gonna use those bumps to join, but they don't start right away. They start a little bit up. So my working yarn is here and I have about three quarters of an inch between where my working yarn is coming out of and where the first bump is. So I want to, um, I want to secure this. And so I'm gonna do regular mattress stitching. And for me, a regular mattress stitch is to go into a stitch that is in from the edge, like two legs of a stitch. Maybe I'll just do one leg of a stitch because of where I'm gonna pick up in there. So I'm gonna go, if this is the stitch, this V between my fingernails is the stitch. If I pull it apart, you can see that bar. If I go into the stitch, I can pull up that bar. That horizontal bar is what I'm after when I do a mattress stitch. I want to be parallel to the edge of the stitch. I don't want to go further over or further into the garment than that. And I'm going to go in line with where this yarn is coming out of into the first stitch along the edge of the side of the shoulder or the side of the neck. And I'm going to pick up one stitch there. And then I'm going to go to the same side. Again, running my needle parallel to the edge, going in to the first stitch along that edge. And I want to dig out that bar. So I'm going in and digging it out and coming back to the front. I'm facing the right side of the fabric when I do this. And now I'm gonna go up to, to the garter, the pearl bump of the garter. So I did, I picked up that loop and I picked one up on the other side. And now I'm coming back and I'm picking up the pearl bump along the edge of the neck. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So my first pearl bump over here is that. And I'm not pulling tight. I'm just leaving those, those stitches loose at the moment. Run your needle parallel to the edge and you'll find the next pearl bump. So I'm alternating sides and going from the side closest to me to the side that's further. Almost like I'm lacing it. You can see it's going zigzag between. And I'm just going back and forth. Somebody asked me, how far do I do that? I usually go about an inch. So I've gone a little bit more than an inch and then holding at the point where I want to start to tighten. I wanna wait for it to come into focus. So I haven't, I haven't finished. I've got this sort of lacing done. I'm holding it here where my uh, working yarn that I'm using is coming out of the seam. And then I'm gonna very gently pull that seaming yarn straight and it disappears into the seam. So that's what the seam looks like now. You can just kind of see the lacing 
there's a little bit of a hole down here. So even though we picked up the first that first stitch on either side, there's still a little bit of a hole that we're gonna darn shut in just a second. Let's finish doing the seam though. So we're part way up. I'm getting the next purl bump on each side. I'm going right up to the tip of the the collar. And then I'm going to do that lacing up again, just very gently pulling on my seaming yarn so that it's a straight line. I like to pull it open a little bit. I want to make sure that there's it's not too tight because I want lots of elasticity in my work. It's a little bit uneven up here. If this mattered, I could close this unevenness up. I'm coming out of the last stitch on this. My working yarn is coming out of this stitch here and there's a little bit of a gap to get to the next stitch on the other side. There's a little, there's just a little play there. So I'm just gonna go around the edges of the first stitch on the opposite side across that gap and then come back in. See where this yarn is coming out of? I'm gonna go right back in in the same spot. And I've just made sort of a fake stitch, but it makes it look joined along the edge. So if you ever have an edge that was worked in the round or that's being seamed together that you want to make look like it's completely joined, you can sort of make this fake stitch. Okay. Earlier we talked about um, at this point, we're going to be turning the collar inside out or inside and tacking it down folded to the inside of the sweater. So I'm going to move to the inside so I can see that all better. And remember I said there was a little bit of a hole. So there's my hole. My working yarn still has the needle on it. And now I'm going to be folding this down. So in folding it down, I can do a little bit of a hole closure. And so what I'm gonna do is put my yarn in where I want it to be tacked down. And then also in tacking it down, I'm gonna work back and forth across that opening. So I just want to keep the sides of that hole from gaping and wearing where my neck is, where I'm you know, putting my head in and out of the sweater. So I'm kind of reinforcing that but I'm not going all the way through to the front of the sweater. I'm splitting these stitches on this side. So I'm kind of working through them and splitting them. I'm also securing that corner down. So now that's kind of firmly tacked in place and the hole is gone. So I just, I just closed it from the inside by sewing the insides of those stitches together. And then as you go along the side to tack down, you could press this with an iron, but what you wanna do is pick a spot where you're going to tack it to. So I think this row right here, this row of stitches is a good one to follow. And I'm going to go into that row, but only a part of, I'm only gonna pick up a part of the stitch. And then I'm gonna go under 
the full edge of the collar itself. I want to follow that across. So maybe go down two or three. And again, you're picking up only a part. So this is like when you're hemming trousers and you don't want to have the hemming thread show on the front of the trousers. You want to make sure as you do this that you're picking up only so I'm just really skimming into this stitch and getting about a third or a half of the ply on my needle, but then I'm fully going through the edge stitch of the collar itself. I keep doing that along this edge. I may run out of my working yarn. I want this to be nice and elastic so that my head will go in. So make sure you pull at it and make sure that there's plenty of room. These stitches should look loose. They shouldn't look really tight. You shouldn't pull them real tight because you're gonna have to get your big old head through there. So I keep going across. So we're just tacking it down in place and it looks like that on the other side. So there's no real visible line for where this collar has been attached. It's being attached right in here. There's just the slightest indent in that line of stitches from because we haven't gone through all the way to the front of the sweater. That is the same I said right sides together when we do the three needle bind off. But when you do the mattress stitch, the right sides are out. So we don't do the mattress stitch from the wrong side. We do it facing the right side of the fabric. So that is the technique for tacking down both the collar and the sleeves. So we'll do the sleeves in the same way when we get to them. Um, so where we are now is we're gonna finish the shoulders and the collar of the sweater completely. So you'll do both shoulders. Again, working from the inside to the outside, that's because most people are gonna look at you here. They're not gonna look at your tips of your shoulders. So if there's anything that's a little cattywampus, you want that to be away from your face. Um, next month, and I, I promise to know what month that was or what day it was. Next month, we are meeting on December 11th and we'll be doing the mattress stitch joining the sleeve to the shoulder, um, unless you're Paula and you already picked up those stitches and worked down from the shoulder. Um, and that will be, it'll be a great opportunity to practice doing stitches to rows. So I'm, uh, stitches to rows means When you are doing a sleeve seam and you're joining, this is my shoulder seam. This is the outside of it. And here's my sleeve. So the sleeve is going to be sewn with the stitches on this side to the rows on this side. And stitches and rows are not the same width. Stitches are wider than rows are tall. So it won't be a one-to-one. -one. Like when we did this three needle bind off, it was one stitch to one stitch. When we do side seams, like the underside of a sleeve or the side of the sweater, it's gonna be one row to one row. But here it's gonna be rows to stitches. And so the best way to prepare for that I find is to pin it into place and you can start by pinning the edge to the edge of your seam. So if you want to get ready for next time, you can pin the edge of where your um, 
couple of stitches came out for the beginning of your armhole shaping, you can pin that together on both sides, the front and the back side. So that one would get pinned here. And then you can find the middle by folding the sleeve. And you can pin the middle to the shoulder seam so that it's pinned in three spots, the middle, the edges, and then you can find the middle of that and pin it, and then the two quarters of that and pin it. So you can pin it at the end, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four on the other side, and that will make our um, doing the mattress stitch at the shoulder seam much easier. After that, we will do the underneath the sleeve, so the sleeve seam and the side seam of the sweater, which will just both be rows to rows. So I'll demonstrate it on one or the other. When we do that, I just want to show that um, that kind of seaming works the best if you do it into the armpits. So if this is my sweater, and I've got my sleeves and I've got my sides and I'm going to seam and we've got, so we'll have finished this part of the sweater. So we'll have this seam finished and the shoulder seams will be finished. And then we'll have the underside of our sleeve and the underside of our sleeve and the side of our sweater. So it is tempting to take a long piece of yarn and start here and just go all the way down. Don't be tempted. And the reason is if you get off anywhere or if the sides of your sweater are not the same, then you can get an irregularity between the length of the front and the length of the back and it leads to an uneven hem. And what do we want? We want even hems, generally speaking. So what you want to do is work from the hem in the direction of the armpit and from the sleeve hem or the, or the outside of the sleeve, the cuff of the sleeve into the armpit. Just like we worked out from the neck in this direction so that we were coming away from the part that's going to be the most visible the ends of our sweaters are a visible place where there can be problems. So you wanna make sure that you line those up and work into the armpit because this is the place you can hide a problem. If you have to work two stitches together or you have to make some kind of an adjustment, it's easier to do it and have it be in the armhole than it is for it to be right at the sleeve edges. I don't expect you guys to have problems with that, but I'm just saying. It's a good place to, to hide a little bit of a boo-boo. All right. So that's what we'll be doing the last time and uh, weaving in our ends. And then we'll be done. Then we might wanna press the sweaters again. It would be a nice idea to steam these shoulder seams because they're a little bit um, indented when you do this. So that's the one I did with the wrong yarn. Let's see if it looks the same with the right yarn. Yeah, it's still a little indented. So I like to press that flat, just like you would if you were sewing something, like sewing fabrics together. It's the same idea. Any questions? All right. It's been a pleasure. I'm going to stop the video.